Um, so anyway, we are um, really excited about all what the Lord's doing. And um, I know that, uh, you know, most of us here, we, we understand, we know healing. But today I'm going to talk about how a lot of times emotional healing is necessary for physical healing. So like if there's trauma or soul wounds or even sin in your life, that can prevent healing. Okay, I mean, uh, can prevent um, you know, hindrance to healing, an obstacle to healing. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. And, um, you know, we know that God loves us all so much and he wants us healed. He wants us to live a victorious life. He wants us to live a life of peace. To me, the most important thing is peace, the shalom of the Lord. And, um, you know, when, uh, don't you love that picture? I, I just love that. That's to me, is the heart of the Father. That's the heart of Jesus. That sometimes we're, we're so struggling and we're in such a difficult place. And, and he's got us. He's carrying us. And, and that picture, I have that even in my home. I just love it so much um, because he wants us to know that he's there. Every little thing that we're going through, every jaw, every tittle, every teardrop, every hair that's on your head and some that's fallen out, he's got you. He's there for you. And so that's just a picture of the kindness and the love of God. And like even when my husband came up before and he said, had it not been for the Lord on my side, where would he be? That scripture was just going over and over and over in my spirit today. Had it not been, I don't know that I'd even be alive. That's just the goodness of God. And he's so real and he's so powerful. And, um, you know, I just wanted, I just thought of this. When Joe was making announcements uh, before, because the graphic didn't come up about... Um, Becca Green would come in, and Pasquale and Norma, or, or Abazo, nice Hispanic folks. But they're going to be doing a deliverance. Um, it's going to be a deliverance weekend. And, um, you know, I know we, we do a lot of deliverance here. We teach it. But I love when we bring outside folks in because they always bring a different flair or different flavor to it. So I just want to encourage you with that. Okay, so for today, the scripture in Romans chapter 12, um, we do have a um, slide yeah, there we go. All right. And so I know we're all familiar with this, but it says, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Now, there's a lot there. And I know we know the scripture, but one of the ways of really changing is through meditation of the word, okay? But it says, do not be conformed. In other words, don't pattern yourself after the world any longer. The world likes to, to pastor us. But how many of you know they're not good pastors? The world doesn't, it may seem logical at times, but it's, it really leads you down a wrong path. It says, but be transformed. And that word transformed is metaphoro, and it means to change into another form. But I like what it says here, to be progressively, you know, that we progressively change. There are certain things that are instant, suddenly, but then a lot of times as we're, as we're maturing in the Lord, as we're, as we're learning the things of the Lord, it's a progressive thing. So, so be patient with yourself. Be patient with others, right? And it says here, as you mature spiritually, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to mature spiritually by how? The renewing of your mind. You can't be reading the Bible every other day or every three days. It's daily. It's meditating on the word. Getting, I gave you the, you, you have the little cards, you know. You say, well, why are you giving me that? I can look it up on the phone. You can. But you know what? Memorize the scripture. Get, become one with the word. You want to mature spiritually. You want to grow, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes. Ethical attitudes, not world attitudes, not woke attitudes, not critical you know, theory thinking and all that nonsense. So that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is. What is the will of God? What does the Bible say? That which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. And I just have to say this when it says, what is the will of God? I just love this. I mean, we all know about abortion. We all know that it's sin, right? It goes against the word of God. It's murder. And so here again, there are a lot of Christians that feel, well, you know, here you go again, being so radical. Yeah, 
It's murder because we minister to the people that have had abortions, okay? And the murder and the, the, the spirit of murder and the spirit and the oppression that comes upon people. It seems good that it's convenient to have the abortion, but it's, it messes with your life and you're taking a life. So it's, it, it goes against the will of God. It's not my opinion. It goes against the word. See, it's not our opinion that matters. It's what God's word says, right? So we transform. We progressively change. It's a change of moral character, okay? And so many are broken from trauma of sin. But Jesus came, as you know, to set the captives free, right? So everything, and I want you to know that everything that the enemy has stolen from you, God wants to restore. You say, well, how does that happen? He can restore peace. He can bring joy into your life. He brings restoration. He brings healing. You know, to me, the greatest gift that we can have is peace. Peace in a world where there's so much fear and trauma that's trying to take you out the peace of the Lord. It's not that you don't acknowledge what's at hand, that you don't take precaution. You know, I think I made that clear last week. Of course we do. But here it's the shalom of the Lord, the peace of God. That's supernatural. Where even though, you know, sometimes it's weird. Sometimes inside, like in your stomach, you have, we, uh, us Italians say agita. We have agita inside. We, got, we have the butterflies going on, but yet we have peace, right? Does that ever happen? You know, it's like, like, I don't know, I just have the peace of God, even though I know I'm nervous, but I have the peace of God. It sounds contradictory, but it's the, it's the spirit of the Lord. So anyway, so let me define trauma here. So trauma, and remember, some of the things that could prevent healing. Now, again, if you're not healed, I am not saying that you're in sin, okay? So, but many things that can prevent healing is sin, but also trauma. So you can have, uh, there's accidental trauma, but then there's divorce there's, when, when people are going through divorce, that's devastating, right? That's trauma. You have sickness, that's trauma. You have shock, you have emotional uh, trauma. You know, like in that when I was saying family hurts uh, or, you know, death of a relative, bad news. It's all different aspects of trauma, okay? Military, right? You know, many in the military have trauma. Medical treatment. What about if you were misdiagnosed from a doctor? Trauma. What about... Um, even going through stuff with doctors. And I bless doctors. I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying when you're sick, you know, and you're struggling, right? And so um, dental trauma. I had dental trauma. I'm telling you, I wasn't going to a dentist. <laughs> I needed major healing and deliverance. So, there, you know, there's so many different things. Bankruptcy, natural disaster. Look at what just happened recently in um, uh, Kentucky. And they say, there, there, that's, tra that's major trauma, car accident. So there's different issues. And it doesn't have to be major. You can fall down the stairs and have trauma. There's different ways that our, our bodies, that we respond to it, okay? So listen, I'm just, there's different aspects of healing. So I just want to bring, give you information. Now, we had Mike Hutchins that was here several months ago. And, and listen, I, I'm, I'm sure it's archived on our YouTube channel. I would... I would encourage you to really watch it because he goes really into detail and he has a fabulous new book out for an emotional trauma. And if you don't have it, I would recommend that you get it. He really goes into detail. I can't do that in, in a half hour and 45 minutes. So anyway, so trauma is a result of, in, uh, of injury, right? And the body reflects that inner pain that's within inside of us. All right. Listen, let me, I just thought of this too. What about trauma, like growing up in school? And there's, it's a different kind of trauma. It's an emotional trauma, but where you were made fun of in school, where you were bullied, where teachers shamed you, that, that's debilitating. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, well, I'll get over it. No, 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 it's the inner child that, that God wants to bring healing to because sometimes you seem so stuck and you can't get moving forward. Well, sometimes it can be that. But the beauty of it is because God's not complicated, he'll uncover those things and bring healing into our lives, right? So I wrote this quote down, and it might not go with what I just said, but I'm going to say it. It says, Bill Johnson said this, you know your mind has been renewed when the impossible looks logical. <laughs> Isn't that good? Okay, so God wants us to get our minds so renewed where the impossible totally looks logical, where it's like, why isn't it happening? You know, why isn't this guy being raised from the dead? Why aren't I getting healing? Why isn't this family getting restored? You see, because God is saying that's the possible. Because it's a supernatural, and when we, when we become so one with him, and God is getting us progressively, again, there's no competition. It's not looking at each other like, why aren't you here? We're all at different places. We've all gone through different things. That's why we have to watch how we judge people. 
We have to watch because we you didn't walk in their shoes. You don't know what they have what happened to them. You don't know what happened to me. You don't know the progress that we all need, right? But the bottom line is we want to push everybody forward. We don't want anybody lagging behind. Do you remember that, that um, it was on YouTube where they had kids with special needs and they were all running a race and the one kid, was he was winning and he saw the other little kid fall and what he did was he stopped and he went back and he went and got the kid so that they can all move forward. Well, that's us. God says we all have special needs. We all have needs that we need freedom from, right? So when we see one lagging behind, we want to help everyone. We don't want you staying near. It's like, oh, that's your problem. No, we want to pull everyone forward along with us for his healing because that's, that's the heart of God. So God wants to take trauma out of the broken, shattered places. Um, the word was released this morning about, God, you know, that God is here and he wants to heal the shattered, the, the places and to cry out to God. And so that's what God wants to do for us. He wants to heal the sudden distresses like divorce, like childhood issues, like family issues, childhood vulnerability, whatever it is, God wants to bring healing. First Thessalonians 5.23 and the good news, you can go to the next slide, says, may the God who gives us peace, make you holy. He gives us peace. The world doesn't give us peace. He gives us peace. Money doesn't give us peace. He gives us peace. It helps, but it doesn't give us peace. But makes you holy in every way and keeps your whole being, spirit, soul, and body free from every fault at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, God wants our spirit, our soul, and our body healed. He wants us to be blameless. In another version, it says blameless, which means free from fault or defect. See, when we become born again, I know you know this, our spirit's automatically born again, but our soul, that's what has to get healed. That's what has to constantly get renewed, right, in our physical body. So listen to this. In Psalm 139, I love this. It says, search me thoroughly, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there's any wicked or hurtful way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. See, that's, when you're, that's the beauty of being in the presence of the Lord. Each day, asking Holy Spirit to highlight areas of our heart. But that word wicked or hurtful, when you look up the word, it literally means, any, it means wicked, hurtful. See if there be any, any uh, wicked way in me. It means sorrow or offense. It means hurtful. Okay. Do you have an offense? Let me tell you something. That's what keeps most of us in bondage is, is that spirit of offense. On uh, Wednesday, we were teaching uh, from the Bait of Satan by John Bevere. And it was such a good class about how we, we, we want, it's almost like we want them to give us payment. They're, if their sorry isn't the way we want it. If, if they didn't respond, it's like we're going to hold them, you know, in, in a prison before we forgive them, that's not, vengeance is the Lord. I wasn't looking at vengeance that way. But he brought that out so beautifully in the book that I really recommend you listen to that. It's so good. And um, hit that book, if you've never read The Bait of Satan, I highly recommend you read that book by John Bevere. Uh, there was a time I read it every three months. Oh, my goodness, I needed help. So, uh, because guess, you know, we get hurt. We get hurt and offended by things, right? And so, but that offense doesn't give us a right. We don't want to stay planted in that place of offense because it holds us back. So he's saying here, see if there's any wicked, any sorrow or offense in me. And lead me in the way of our lasting. And then I wrote it out in the passion. Listen to the way he wrote it. Um, there you go. All right. So, God, I invite your searching gaze into my heart. I love the way that's worded. Oh, God, we invite you into our heart. Examine me through and through and find out everything that may be hidden within me. See, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. We have the hidden things, the structures within us that prevent us. If you're not getting free in an area, it could be for the hidden things in you, Right? And it says, put me to the test and sift through all my anxious cares. We all have stuff. And that's where, again, we have to get before the Lord to help address the anxiety within our heart, to help address the areas that may be causing us to, to be paralyzed and afraid to move forward, okay? See if there is any path of pain I'm walking on. And lead me back to your glorious, everlasting way, the pain that brings me, I mean, the path that brings me back to you. Isn't that something? That path of pain. We all have a path of pain we have walked on or may be walking on. But see, the Lord wants to bring healing to that. The other scriptures in uh, Psalm uh, 38 in the Amplified, verse 5, my wounds are loath 
loathsome and corrupt because of my foolishness. We make dumb choices, right? And so when you look up that word loathsome, it means offensively moral and to stink. <laughs> my mother would say to me, go read it. And my mother was from Italy, and if we, she lived with us, and sometimes, you know, we get a little angry with each other. And if I had the attitude, as she would say, she goes, go read it, that book, because your attitude, it stinks. <laughs> So does your attitude stink? You know, so, I mean, it says because of our attitude, because of our actions, because of sin, my wounds are loathsome, offensively, immorally stinking, and corrupt because of my foolishness, because of stupidity. Because I looked up the word foolishness. It means it says one who despises wisdom, one who is quarrelsome. And perverse, a perverse mindset, twisted mindset, qu uh, quarrelsome. There's a scripture in Proverbs 18. It says, a fool has no delight in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. So we don't want to be foolish, right? We don't want to always just express our opinion. We want to have an opportunity to try to understand and try to learn, right? So, um, you know, again, the, the, the word came out this morning in Psalm 34, 18. It says, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit, contrite in heart, truly sorry for their sins, shattered. And see, here's the thing. You may be going through something, but I want to encourage you that God is simple. It's not complicated. But when you cry out to God and surrender and give up your right to be right and say, look, I am shattered inside. I don't know what else to do, but, Lord, here I am. I give you my heart. He meets us where we're at. I, I just have seen God supernaturally meet people right where they're at because of their heart of humility and surrender and how God has brought breakthrough into lives. It's not that complicated. We complicate things. There are, I mean, and there's progressive healing in that. Hey, listen, God can suddenly do whatever he wants, but he wants to heal the shatteredness. He wants to heal the brokenness within our heart, okay? So, and broken heart, it literally means to, to be shattered in pieces. So, what I want you to see is, I want you to see where sin can really also hinder us, okay? In Luke chapter 9, in the Amplified, in verse 11, that's the next slide. It says, um, well, you should have Luke chapter 9. There it is, okay. When the crowds learned of it, they followed him, and he welcomed them. I love that, I love that. He welcomes each and every one of us. I don't care where you've been, who you are, what you've done, he welcomes you in. If you're, if you're seeking him, he welcomes you. And he began talking to them about the kingdom of God and healing those who needed to be healed. Now, that particular word healed there is Iomayo, something like that. And it means to cure, to heal, but it means to free from errors and sin. He went about healing those who were in sin, who went about who had a wrong mindset, who went about, you know, people who were aligned or partying out there and doing their thing. He said, listen, I'm here to heal you. And there are many symptoms, uh, you know, uh, many, uh, you know, uh, trauma has roots in accidents and traumas. I said, unconfessed sin, unforgiveness. And I'm going to tell you something, unforgiveness towards yourself, all right? Any kind of ungodly beliefs, obstacles to healing. Listen, and I'm going to tell you something. So just be careful, too, even as I'm speaking today. Don't let your mind be so preoccupied, okay? Listen to what the Word is trying to say because Jesus wants us healed. Jesus wants our emotions healed. Jesus wants us to be focused on him, not our phone, not our iPad. He wants us to listen because let me tell you something. The place of idolatry right now is with social media. That is one place, man. Sometimes we, we need to have an altar call and have people repent of idolatry for social media. I'm serious. So, you know, it, it, in Luke chapter 4, it says here, then Jesus returned in the power. We heard about Holy Spirit. We have dunamis power within us. You know one of the definitions for dunamis? It's power. It's dynamite. We have that explosive dynamite power. But you know what it also means? Excellence of power. Excellence of soul. Excellence of soul. What does that mean? My soul is getting healed. I'm coming out of that immature mindset. I'm coming out of gossip. I'm coming out of lying. I'm coming out of, of being jealous of others. I'm coming out of always being so negative and complaining. Excellence of soul. Powerful. It's powerful. You flow in dunamis power. God loves each and every one of us, and he wants us to be powerhouses for him. We have dunamis power within us, every single one of us, every single one of us. It's not eeny, meeny, miny, mo. It's all of us, right? So it says here, Jesus returned in the power of the spirit of Gal to Galilee, and news of him went out throughout all the region. 
And um, so, so that, that scripture there, God wants us to understand that, that he's healing all. And then there was the scripture that I didn't put on the handout in Luke chapter 4, 31. It says, Jesus answering said to them that there are many who, who are, it says here, there are they that are whole need a physician, but they that are sick, I, I, I don't know how I wrote this. Um, I can't understand my handwriting. And Jesus answered, said to them, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. So when you look up the word sick there, and this is in several portions in the gospel, listen to this. That word sick is echo, and it means agitating emotions. It means possession of the mind. Jesus went about healing all those that were battling with agitated emotions. Have any of us ever battled with that? Have our emotions agitate the living daylights out of us? Possession of the mind. What is possessing your mind? It's either the word is possessing your mind or fear. It's the, you know, the word is possessing your mind or, um, you know, fear of lack or sickness or whatever it is. And, and so it's legitimate that we have these issues, but we need to focus on, well, what does the word say? Because I don't know about you, and I've said this before, does worry ever change anything? No, it gives me more agita. So we have to meditate on the word. I mean, if you can worry, you can meditate. It's the same thing. We think about it. We go over and over and over in our mind. What's not right? How is that working for you? So meditate on the word. Get the scripture. Get my little cards out. Meditate on the scripture. You know, in Luke 1 15, I don't have it on the handout. The kingdom of God is at hand. What's the kingdom of God when we're talking about that? It's, it's healing. It's deliverance. It says repent. Change your inner self. Old ways of thinking. What's old ways that don't align with the word? Re, um, regret past sins. Live your life in a way that proves, I love this, proves repentance. Believe with a deep abiding trust in God. Live your life in a way that proves repentance. Live your, your life in a way where people will say, wow, I can see the change in you. You know, because we can all talk. Talk is cheap. But it's when they see the change. That's, that's the difference when there's change and there's transformation in your life, right? And so we all, n none of us like cheap talk. And we know in Isaiah 61, I'm going to read it to you out of the message. No, I'm sorry, the uh, passion. Uh, this was, it was in Luke chapter 4 in, in Isaiah 61. It's Luke's, I mean, Jesus' mandate. He said, the mighty spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, is wrapped around me because Yahweh has anointed me as a messenger to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the wounds of the brokenhearted. How many have been brokenhearted? To tell captives, you're free. You don't need to stay in bondage. Those of you online, you don't need to stay in bondage. If you're bound by something, Jesus came to set the captives free. And to tell prisoners, be free from darkness. I am sent to announce a new season of Yahweh's grace and a time of God's recompense on his enemy and to comfort all who are in sorrow, to strengthen those who are crushed by despair, who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful bouquet in the places, place of ash and the oil of bliss instead of tears, and the mantle of joyous praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. And because of this, they'll be known as mighty oaks of righteousness planted by Yahweh as a living display of his glory. Listen, this is powerful. He can restore, and he can, you know, where you've been in tears, he can give you that mantle of joyous praise where there's been a spirit of heaviness. God can redeem that. God can bring freedom and deliverance. So instead of walking around grieving and mourning, God wants to comfort and heal you. He doesn't want you to be in a place of depression. Our inner man is wounded by sins and it needs to be healed. And listen, if you're the one that's causing a problem, God wants to heal you too. It's not just for the ones that, are, that have been the, the recipient of it. God wants to bring healing to your heart as well. But I'm telling you something. It's what you put into something that you get out of it. You meditate on the word. You, you say, but I, I don't read. I, I, you know, we've met ministers, so many people. Well, I don't read. Well, then get an audio and listen to it online. Listen, if, if someone was going to tell you that, you know, you're going to, there's a million dollars in this place and it's hidden. If you're the first one to find it, it's all yours. You're going to do whatever you can to find that million dollars, right? So let me just put it to you this way. The million dollars is freedom in Christ. And Jesus has given us antidotes. He's telling us, here's what you can do for your freedom. But if you want to intellectualize everything, you know, and like act like you know more than Jesus, but I like to look at the fruit in your life. Where has there been progress in your life? Here's what the word, this is what we all had to do. I suffered with so much fear and anxiety and depression. 
I couldn't stand it anymore. When you get so tired of it, then you'll do whatever you can do. And again, you know, at the time, I, I, there wasn't counselors. At, not, at least not that I was aware. I'm sure there were counselors, but I didn't know who to go to. And if you did, you, you know, they thought you were crazy, you know. And so nowadays, we have a lot that's out there. Counselors that you can go to, people that can coach you, people that can help walk you through. You don't have to do this alone. But in the meantime, what I'm saying is get your word. What, what does the word say for you? Dec prophesy over yourself. I said it last week. Speak life over yourself. Don't keep looking at the negative. Don't keep the, you're going to be depressed if you keep doing it. I know. I speak from experience, okay? So don't keep doing that. But I know that Jesus came to set us free. And I love the scripture because he says, I am no respecter of persons. And so God wants to bring that healing. So, so you know, Psalm 41, uh, 4 says, Oh, Lord, be merciful. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. See, when we, when we sin, we have uh, soulish wounds that, that need to, um, you know, to get healed. Um, and then I just want to quote uh, Proverbs 26. These are all things that, hinder our, that, that wound our soul. The words of a whisperer or slanderer are like dainty morsels or words of sport to some, but to others are like deadly wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the body or of the victim's nature. That's how, that's how demonic gossip is, trashing people, putting people down, making fun of them. How would you like it if, if people were saying that to you, like if you've been doing that or lying about you? It's very hurtful. So anyway, but and remember, it, it, really, it really hurts us. And so a lot of this stuff can be generational. You know, we'll, we'll deal with all that when we do our deliverance class. But listen to this. In John chapter 5, you can fast forward to John chapter 5. Um, yeah. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. And then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water has been, was made well of whatever disease he had. And there was a certain man there who had an infirmity 38 years. That word infirmity there is essentia. And it means want of strength, weakness, sickness of the soul. It's the same thing with the lady with the issue of blood who was uh, bound for 18 years. He, she had sickness of the soul because Jesus says, go and sin no more. In his particular case, he had sickness of the soul. And there was a sickness there, a wound that was there that caused him to, to be sick, all right? Because he, even here, the, he was told to go and sin no more. But the thing is, could he have been offended? Think about it. He says he's sitting there for 38 years. He said uh, when, uh, I forget who, Peter or Paul, whoever, when they went and spoke to him, they, um, he said, hey, listen, I can't get out. I, no one's there to help me, to put me in the water. Could you imagine? Wouldn't you have been aggravated with some of the people? Like, yeah, nice Christian you are. You're not even helping me to get in the water, and I need healing. You know, like he could have been offended. I don't know. I'm just, you know, it's conjecture. I'm just saying that. But his soul needed to be healed. But I was looking at this. I said, Lord, here you are. You want to heal sick people. You want to heal the blind. When I looked up that word blind, it literally meant spiritually and physically blind. He wants to heal the lame, the paralyzed. You know, we're all waiting for the, for the, for the water to move, but the Lord is saying, what are you doing here? Are, are you allowing me to come in and infiltrate your heart? Are you allowing me to speak to you? Are you stepping out in faith? Are, it doesn't make sense to our logical mind, does it? But Jesus, you know, he's saying, here's what I want you to do. And freedom is beautiful. It's a wonderful thing that you can go to sleep at night and not be in fear and worry, even when things are going around you that's wrong. It's a beautiful thing. That's the power of the blood of Jesus. And so, you know, we, we, you know God wants us to know, is there a healing that you need? Is there weakness in your soul? You know, and it can prevent uh, healing. So believing in the finished work of Christ is, is important. We, we know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our deliverance and our healing and resurrection. In 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, He personally bore our sins in his own body on the tree as on an altar and offered himself on it that we might die, cease to exist to sin and live to righteousness, and by his wounds you have been healed. Okay? So I want you to just think as I'm, I'm talking to you, is there anything... Is there anything that could be in your heart that could be holding you back? Listen, you don't have to have a sickness right now. Is there anything, though, emotionally? Now, if you're sick, could there be? I'm not saying there is. 
You have to, you know, that's your dialogue between the Lord. And you know the trauma, you know, many times a lot of illnesses occur as a result of trauma. Because a lot of times we'll say, when did this start happening? Oh, when I was in a car accident. Oh, when the dentist did this to me. <laughs> oh, when, when I was in a car accident. You know, the dentist drilled my lip and I didn't want to go back to him. <laughs> anyway, so. Forgive him. I did forgive him. I did. It took me a while, but I forgave him. <laughs> anyway, so, so God wants us to be healed. In, in 3 John 2 in the Amplified, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may be kept well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. So listen to this. He's saying, above all, above everything else, he goes, I want you to prosper. When you look up that word prosper, it's E-U-D-O-O, E-D-U-O, and it means to succeed in business affairs, to succeed. He wants you to prosper. Physically, he wants you to prosper emotionally, financially. He wants you to prosper. And so then it says here, um, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way, that your body may keep well, or be in health is another version. That word health is uh, shugani, something like that. It means to be sound, to be in good health, and Christians who opinions, this is what it means, are free from mixture of error. Are your opinions free from mixture of error? What, do you, what, what am I saying about it? Is it in alignment with the word? What does the word say? And so that's the thing. Lord, you want me to forgive that dentist. I forgave him. Lord, you want me to release bitterness towards that person that cut me off. I choose to do it. Lord, you want me to, to, to like that person that hurt me terribly. I'm not, because a lot of times we don't want to do it because we feel we're letting that person off the hook. You're not. Listen, God wants to bring healing to both parties, but in the meantime, it will hinder you. Always remember, it hinders us from really walking in freedom. So um, we're going to be praying soon. I'm going to do a corporate prayer today. That uh, and We have a prayer team, but I just really felt that that was the Lord, how he wanted me to, um, to do it today. Uh, you know, in Psalm 103, we know, Bless affectionately, gratefully, praise the Lord, all my soul, and all that is deepest within me. Bless his holy name. All, oh, oh God, how I praise you. Bless affectionately and gratefully praise him. The Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not one of his benefits. What are his benefits? Healing, deliverance, uh, freedom, safety, prosperity. Those are his benefits, all right? Who forgives every one of your iniquities and who heals each one of your diseases. Iniquities, we have generational stuff that we have in our family. It's not just generational iniquities, but it's also learned behaviors, Right? So we have, there's generational stuff, but then it's like something we just learned. It's just everybody did it that way. You know, that that's what we have to recognize. Am I walking in that? So, you know, again, the Lord is just saying this. He wants to encourage us. He wants us to know that regardless of what you're going through right now, he wants you to understand, not just here, but here in your heart, that he loves you beyond measure. He loves you with a, an everlasting love. He wants you to submit to him and surrender to him because he wants you walking in whatever he has for you, you know? And, and that's the beauty because I remember, you know, when I got saved, I thought, Lord, how in the world are you going to do this, right? Anybody ever think that, like, Lord, you look at everything and think, Jesus, how in the world? But that's why he's God and we're not. And... Um, he, he brought restoration. He brought transformation. He brought restoration in family members. And, you know, we have family members that are saved that we never thought can be saved. We, I, I mean, who really came against us and fought hard against the gospel. People have been delivered. I mean, we, you know, we were both. I mean, we you partied. I mean, you know, you know you're in the world. And, and, you know, you're brought up in a way. We were brought, or at least I was brought up in a denomination. And I was so turned off to everything. I became an atheist. So I was an atheist for a long time. I didn't want to hear about God. Don't talk to me about God. These people are crazy. And, you know, here I am, right? But, but until God gets a hold of you and, and you start, you know, it's like there was an old song. And I, believe me, I really was a kid. And, and this lady would sing a song. I was a wee child for sure. But is that all there is, my friend? There was some, who was it? But Linda, you would know who. Peggy Lee. <laughs> Peggy Lee sang a song. Is that all there is, my friend? You know, and it's such a depressing song. You go through life and say, is this it? Is that all there is, Lord? 
Come on. And so the Lord is saying, no, that's not all there is. That's not my plan I have for you. That's your plan, and that's what you may be listening to. Come up higher. Come up higher. But if you're constantly going to complain, I always want to point out everything that's wrong. I'm not saying you can't discuss it. But if that is what's consuming it, it's going to hold you back. Believe me, I know. I've done it. So it doesn't work. And so God is saying, listen, let me lift you up higher. What can you do different that you're doing right now? Can you, hey, how about you go on a 21-day word fast, word, a, a fast from complaining, but also a word initiative where you read the Bible every day, read a couple of chapters out loud. How about if you do that? I promise you, you get set free from something. So it's powerful. I know what it does for me. So God wants us to walk in absolute freedom. He doesn't want us to be distracted. He doesn't want us to, to walk in bondage. What good is it? I mean, here we are, you know, as Christians, and then, you know, people look at some of us like, oh, Lord, I don't want their God, right? So I know that he delivered, um, you know, me from a lot of stuff, and I'm just grateful because I know, I don't know about some of you, but in, in the thick of things, when I was really struggling, all I fantasized about was killing myself, I was taking my life, because I didn't have hope. And the beauty in the gospel of Christianity is that he is a God of hope. He gives you hope. He gives you comfort. Like, and I couldn't see beyond where I was at. And, and I thought, man, I said, if this is for real, these people are talking to me about this Jesus that's supposed to help me. I didn't see beyond that. And I thought, well, I'll give him a year. What, what else? I, you know, I have nothing else going on. And I didn't. And, and the thing, really, that was transforming in my life was meditating on the Bible. I just read the Bible. I didn't go to church. I read the Bible. And I didn't understand it, but I read it. But our, my spirit man got it. So I want to encourage you. You know, like even when, when um, you know, uh, Paul said to, or Peter, I always forget who ministered to the lame guy, but he said, look at me. And when, when you look at that word, look at me, it means wake up. Come out of your slumber. Come on. And that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to pray a prayer with you. Because I, I'm going to read the scripture in 2 Corinthians, and I know we know this. The weapons of our warfare are not physical. Weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Those things that we erect in our mind that we think we can't get free from. We are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. See, this is what God is saying. One last scripture that I, I feel very prompted to read is in um, Matthew. And... Um, Jesus said here, it says in Matthew 4, 23, and I'm going to then pray, and I'm going to ask you to pay attention to me. You can either sit or you can stand up, and I'm going to release some corporate prayers over you for freedom, all right? And it says here, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and manner of disease amongst the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those who were possessed of devils. Now... Jesus, he, his heart of compassion was for everybody. So when you start really studying this, and pretty much throughout Matthew, this, there's this word that I'm going to tell you is in the book of Matthew and some in Luke. But it says here he went, he was preaching the gospel and healing in all manner of sickness, of disease and disability. And it says in, manner, in all manner of disease among the people, Right? And so what did he do? When you look up where it says all manner of sickness, it's physical ailments, but guess what the word diverse diseases here means? It's the, it's the Hebrew, it's the Greek word malakos, and it literally means from homosexual lifestyle. Jesus went about healing all those with, who was battling with all kinds of physical ailments, sickness, and homosexuality because it was prevalent in those days. So I'm telling you right now, I don't care what the world says. 
Jesus came about, he went about healing all manners of sickness, all manners of uh, addiction, and all manners of, of homosexuality. When you start looking up the word, look, I did a word study. I went to every scripture of sickness and disease in the Bible. And it is several times in the book of Matthew, it's in Luke, about healing homosexuality, lesbianism, whatever that lifestyle, perverse lifestyle, it was happening then. It didn't just happen now. This isn't anything new. But Jesus went about. He had compassion. And he knows that whatever you're battling with, whatever that lie that the enemy tells you, oh, well, you have this one. That addiction is not going to set you free. That You can't get free from that. That's bull. Loney. That is baloney. <laughs> Sorry. That's baloney. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Baloney. Belief so, system. <laughs> sorry? Belief system. Belief system. BS. BS. Belief system, right? Belief system. Belief system. Anyway, so Jesus went about, I mean, listen, it is. So Jesus went about healing all. And God wants to set us free. I don't care what it is. Do you have faith where can you open up your heart of expectation? Listen, there's a period of time, the young teenagers, they're not here right now, but they think they know more than Jesus. And they go down a path that like they think we didn't walk down that path, right? Like, yeah, hello, we've been there. But we're trying to save you from the wounds. We're trying to save you from the hurt. We're trying to prevent you from a lifestyle that, the enemy, that opens up the door of the enemy to kick your behind. When you have sex outside of marriage, the Bible says flee fornication. Guess what? It opens the door for you. I didn't write the book. That's him. He wrote it. He knows because there's soul ties. And then what's in that person when you're out of covenant comes into you and vice versa. There's deliverance that's necessary most often. See, see, we don't realize that. And then when you have a broken heart because after the person's done with you and leaves you, then you're broken over that. You see, God wants to bring healing and restoration. The church has to talk about it. The church has to say, Jesus came to set you free, wants to set you free from pornography. There's visual images. You've got to break soul ties with that stuff. There's visual images there where the enemy wants to keep you in bondage and you're ashamed of it. But see, Jesus came to set free people free from shame. And so he's saying, but listen, you have to do it my way. I'm not going to put you down. I'm not going to ridicule you. I just want you to be honest. You can't get free if you're not honest. And when you're honest and you say, here I am, it's me. Here's where I've been at. I mean, watching some of the trash that's on TV with the sex and all the vulgarity that's on there. Come on, that's open door. That is an open door. Why would you want to taint your soul with that kind of trash? And so, you know, I'm not going to let the world tutor me cover me teach me why would you want that and so watch the chosen watch the chosen amen i know there's christians coming against chosen because they're saying that the author the, the writers are jesuits are come on the lord will use the devil any old way he wants but he's getting the word out the gospel out come on let's stop being so stinking religious about certain things my god of course, I'm always looking at root systems, and I want to always know, you know, the background to something, but they're getting the gospel of Jesus Christ out. Now, I haven't even researched what they're saying, because I don't even know, but I'm just saying, you can't tell me. We watch The Chosen. This is the gospel. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray, because I really felt like, we, we will have a prayer team, but I really felt like the Lord said to release a corporate prayer of deliverance and healing, inner healing over people over all of us, okay? You can sit or you can stand, but I'm going to pray now, okay? You all right with that? All right. So I want you to close your eyes. You don't have to read anything. I'm just going to pray this, and then, um, you know, we'll take it from there. All right. So, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for each and every person here. Lord, your amazing love is only what gets us all through. Had it not been for you on our side, oh, God, where would we be? Whew. We thank you, Lord, that you're real. And even, even for those, you know, some of us here may not even be at that place. They may not understand how you break through, how you minister. But, Lord, we ask you to unlock hearts today in Jesus' name. So, Lord, I'm, I'm, the Lord is inviting you into a safe place. He's safe. And even though it may not feel safe at times because of the things that will trigger you, be rest assured that God is with you. And God is here to heal your heart. 
And right now, by the power of the blood of Jesus, I welcome Holy Spirit. We thank you that, Lord, your word says he's our comforter, he's our helper, he's, he's our paraclete, he's alongside of us, oh God. And, Lord, we, we thank you that, that you're our deliverer and that for this very purpose, Jesus was manifested to destroy Satan's works. And I declare forgiveness of God in Jesus' name. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, or what's been done to you or what you've done to others, the Lord says, as you ask for forgiveness, he will free you. You are free. You're no longer defined by your history because you're a new creation in Christ. And you are defined by the one who calls you his own, who calls you a son, who calls you a daughter. You are not orphaned. You are not abandoned. You are welcomed into his family. And by the power of the blood, I break the power of shame. You carry due to trauma or traumas you've experienced. What was done to you or what you have experienced does not speak to who you are. You no longer carry shame because none of God's children have shame. God wants to heal you of shame right now. Just, just say, Lord, I give you the shame. I give you guilt. God, guilt is not, the Bible says in Romans 8, 1, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There's no guilt. Give it over to him, the Lord's saying. I break the power of guilt that you carry for sin or things you did to cope with your pain. Drug addiction. I speak to you. I break your hold over each and every one. Drug addiction is a way to counterfeit affection, sexual addiction, food addiction, you know, shopping addiction. It's a counterfeit affection. But God's saying, don't settle for that. He wants to free you. In Jesus' name, there's no condemnation. And by the power and the declaration of Isaiah 61, I declare the Spirit of the Lord is here to bring good news to your broken heart. He's here to heal you and declare liberty and freedom. And right now, he's bringing comfort for mourning, joy for sorrow, a mantle of praise for heaviness through divine exchange. And I sever every demonic assignment that has been released against you. And in Jesus' name, I command all spirits of trauma, torment, and fear to go. Now, in Jesus' name, I break your hold. Lord, I lose peace over their minds right now. And I sever your assignment against these people by the power of the blood of Jesus. Now, I speak to a spirit of suicide, fantasy suicide. I break your power, and I command you to stop right now. I speak to murder, rage, anger, bitterness. I sever your assignment in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, you no longer have a place in the life of these people praying. I sever the spirit of death. I say to you that you carry the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. And I command the spirit of death to go. And I thank you, Lord, that each one of us have that spirit of resurrection life dunamis power, resurrection life within each and every one here. You are not defeated. You are not a failure. And I break off that spirit of limitation. I break off that, that stagnancy that's trying to hold you back, that spirit of passivity. We go now. I break it off. And I cancel and break off depression, oppression, insanity, mental illness, spirit of bipolar or multiple personality disorder in Jesus' name. God, you, can't, you gave us the mind of Christ. Jesus, we thank you for the power of your blood. I sever your assignment now in Jesus' name. I sever right now the spirit of lust and perversion and sexual violation and slavery off of each one now. And I declare that the shackles and chains that have been holding you back, even for blaming yourself, Lord, we say they are free. They're broken off you now. You are no longer a slave in any way, shape, or form under the thumb of sexual perversion. Don't listen to that lie. You, you don't need to do that. And I break the power of pornography. I sever the hold it has upon your soul and your mind. I command the images and, and the memories of pornography to dry up now. Now, I invite you to put your hand on your heart as I speak healing to your broken heart, to areas that have been shattered, to areas that have been wounded. And I let, let the power of Holy Spirit right now just speak to you. Holy Spirit, we just thank you that just like on the potter's wheel, nothing is discarded. God, you're, 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 you're just bringing back to pieces and healing soul wounds, hearts, disappointments, family issues. There's some here where you feel like you've been rejected and abandoned by your family. God is saying, I'm so sorry for the pain that you've gone through, but I'm here to heal you. 
He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Just let the Spirit of the Lord speak to you right now. Lord, I thank you that you're, you're, you only bring memories up to people that are necessary. We don't have to dredge through everything. But whatever it is, if, you, if you're remembering something and there's unforgiveness or whatever that emotion is, just release it to the Lord. You can't heal yourself. You can't forgive. You need his presence. You can choose to forgive, but he brings the healing. So, Lord, I thank you that we can walk in freedom. I declare healing come into your heart, the shalom of God. That, Lord, that you bring wholeness and wellness that will affect our minds, will, and emotion. I invite you to put your hand on your head if you want. And in the name of Jesus, I speak to every traumatic image, every disappointing thought, every memory in the right lobe of your brain and command these images to dry up and die. I sever neuropathy neur uh, that leads to traumatic images and memories. I sever your seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, and hearing from being triggered through these neural pathways. I sever every lie and stronghold connected with traumatic images and memories. Lord, I just lose the power of your blood. Lord, where the enemy has been just been given a right only because of what's gone on, because of these images and what's happened, Lord, we just shut the door to that in Jesus' name. I command the memory center to wake up and let there be a free flow of memory so that what is restored to you is good memories about your life. Let them focus on the good that has happened. Your, mo your, your mind is no longer hijacked by traumatic images and memories. Jesus. Now, Lord, I speak to the nervous system. Where there's been chronic pain, I command it to go. Lord, I'm just asking you to heal every part of the body to the, um, to the skeleton, uh, skeletal system and, and to uh, the, uh, where, uh, just even the, the hormones and just set that in right order, Lord. To the skeletal where there's been bone issues, where there's just been, you know, uh, traumatic events. Lord, I ask that you heal the cellular memory. Go in there and heal that, Lord, the memory from all this muscle pain associated with accidents or, or ungodly touch. Lord, I just ask that you heal that area where they were violated. Just heal that memory there. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, healing to the circulatory system, to the lymphatic system. I declare healing to the digestive system so that you can eat normal, eat healthy. I speak to your reproductive area where there's been any kind of female issues or we just lose the power of your blood. Lord, if there's been any trauma there as a result of any violation that has prevented birthing, that's prevented healing of any sort, Lord, we just ask for to heal that part. I just speak to trauma in different parts of your body and I command release right now in Jesus' name. I speak to the respiratory issue. And even like with all this COVID stuff that has attacked, attacked lungs or any kind of lung issue, Father, we just pray for healing. Even those that family members and people we know struggling with COVID, Lord, we lose your healing over them. Father, we ask for creative miracles. For some, you might need to give her new lungs. Lord, we ask for a creative miracle here in Jesus' name. So we speak to our immune system, and we command it to come into God's will, which is total alignment, which is health. Father, help us eat healthy. Help us to do what's right, oh God. We just ask for uh, wisdom, and we just speak to our immune system to act as a physical defense against all harmful organisms in Jesus' name. Lord, we just thank you that, that you're also very practical, and there are practical things, Lord, that we need to do to be healthy. And so, Lord, forgive us where we have not treated our bodies well. Lord, forgive us where we have eaten poorly or we've done things to our body that has caused sickness. Lord, your word says that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we repent for we have uh, mistreated our bodies. We repent for hating ourselves. We repent for self-rejection. Um, uh, forgive us for that, Lord. 
we choose to accept ourselves. We choose to allow you to love our, us and to we choose to love ourselves in Jesus' name. So, Lord, I just thank you. And lastly, I speak to sleep issues. Lord, your word says in Proverbs that you give your beloved a sweet sleep. So, Lord, where many are battling with insomnia, I take authority over that now in Jesus' name. We bind that, the hindrance even from worry, all kinds of thoughts that prevent you from sleeping or just physical issues. Father, I declare you are no longer defined by your history, that you are defined by, by the, the, the blood of Jesus. And, Lord, I just say heal our sleep issues in Jesus' name. Listen, this is all by faith. And it's by faith that I have been set free. And so it's by faith you are set free. And so, Lord, we just worship you. We exalt your name. Jesus, you have thought of every single little thing. Whatever it is we're battling with, you are here to heal us. And so, Lord, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you, oh God, that you're healing our hearts. And so, Lord, I just seal this time in your blood. But before I do that, I bind every tormenting thought, every spirit that has been this lying spirit of fear. I speak to a spirit of fear right now. I cut and sever your hold off of each and every one that's even been paralyzed by what's out there in the world and by COVID and different things. Father, you said you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of sound mind. And I thank you, Lord, that you'll walk us through all this. But we silence the mouth of the enemy. And each and every one of us have great authority here. And we thank you for the authority and the power of the blood of Jesus that each and every one of us has. He just doesn't want you to have revelation of who you are in Christ. Believe me. So, Lord, I bless each and every one. I thank you for deliverance. I thank you for healing. I thank you for restoration. Lord, even where there have been judgments here, I hear the Lord saying, even from family issues, like where you may have judged your father and you may have judged your mother. The Bible says that the measure you judge, it comes back to you and God wants to bring healing. In other words, you know, there, there are some here that you've just had such hardship in your life and the Lord wants you to know that he's there for you and he doesn't want you to blame right now. They may have been, there may have been a reason why things happen, but right now just just cut your losses and let him bring healing and, and the blame and the constant blame you know it's not good we have to take ownership for our own stuff right so Lord I just thank you for what you're doing in each of our lives and, and, and the most important thing I want you to know is he's there for you and I know you know but he really loves us he loves us so very much no matter what we've done no matter who we've hurt or hurt us he will help us get to that place of freedom and deliverance. And we're here for you. We have a, a, an altar team and whatever. And the greatest thing, man, is when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Oh, I mean, it could take you a year for counseling with that one. When he's showing you stuff and highlighting it, stop blaming. And the Lord is saying, stop running. Stop running. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I just saw a picture that I want to share because I don't know if it's for somebody specifically here or somebody online. But... Um, the picture that I had as Trisha was touching on some of these difficult subjects that no one can know how complicated our lives are and what you've had to walk through and some of the things that get stuck in the back that we, we tend to not want to deal with because it hurts. It hurts just to think about some of those things. And, and the picture was in an airplane in the cockpit with a pilot and a co-pilot. And, and somehow when these delicate topics topics get touched on we have a flight mechanism and we just want to flee that thing we, we just want to oh no I'm not going there it's it's too painful and I saw the Lord reach over from the one side of the cockpit and turn the engine off and say stop running and and there's a, there's a verse in Romans that says there is therefore now no condemnation right there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ and the fuel of that airplane is condemnation you feel condemned. That's the, that's the main job of the enemy is to condemn you. He's like an attorney that's trying to bring your case you know, before the court and saying they have no shot. They should just be punished with the death sentence. And, and the Lord is saying, no, 
I'm going to be there with you. You're not going to go through this alone. I'm going to be there with you. And if you will just stop that flight mechanism from kicking in and be willing to stand there with me, I will walk you through it. Yes, you'll feel emotion, but you're going to come out on the other side more whole than if you just keep fleeing. So, Lord, I know that takes courage. So I just ask for instead of condemnation to be the fuel, let courage be the fuel that gets us out of that pit, gets us out of that hole, gets us the muscle memory of, of just always fleeing. Whenever that subject would come up, I just flee. Give us the patience and the courage to stand there and walk through it with you. In Jesus' name. And the last thing right before we close is the disappointment. Some of you may think, yeah, but I've done all this for so long. And, and you're disappointed. It, now is not the time to give up. His delay is not his denial. And just remember when I shared that story about Delia Knox, 22 and a half years in a wheelchair, and then she gets healed, right? Had she, what if she gave up? So, Lord, I, I, know, I know disappointment hurts. Listen, I'm waiting on things a long time for freedom. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. Don't give up. Get, get a strategy from the Lord, but I know the disappointment, but you, there's a tendency to want to get really angry and bitter. That's going to hinder your breakthrough. You see, there's a, there, the, the enemy has a strategy too, but God is greater. But, you know, Lord, we just repent for being angry with you where we have waited and waited and waited and waited and waited. And, Lord, we, we choose to trust you. We choose to release the bitterness and the resentment and a disappointment because we can't figure you out. You have a plan. We don't understand it. But Lord, even in that, in the forgiveness piece, God, we just ask that you, you show us the path. Show us where we may have missed it or whatever it is, God. But I thank you, Lord, you're on our side because your word says that, that we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. So Lord, I just thank you for your amazing love for each and every one of us. I bless each and every one here. And I thank you, Lord. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. In Jesus' name, amen. So we have a prayer team. If you'd like some further prayer, just come on up. Don't forget to stop at the...